All right, this is day number 65 of building my business and streaming and showing how I do it. So what we're going to be doing today is today we're going to be writing here an email to my to my newsletter. And I found here a really cool blog post about 12 steps to better code. Now, the, the, the cool part about this code is about this, this, this blog post is not the what 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 are the 12 12 uh, questions that he asks, but the way it starts. And I kind of want to emulate this way of writing because I really, really love the way it works. I didn't show you. <laughs> Here we go. Let's think. So I want to do this thing uh, today, write an email, and I'm going to probably schedule it for tomorrow for my newsletter. And after that, um, I'm gonna see if I if we have time. Then I'm gonna probably spend time on um, searching for video ideas, and I have a few in mind. Uh, but I need to like create find what kind of videos do I want to shoot. That's the idea. Um, now what what are we building? We are building learn.com. Hi hi, <laughs> uh, learnapex.com. And on this website, you can go and learn Apex basically from scratch. This is an interactive platform. Basically, if you're from the Salesforce ecosystem, you know, it's like a trailhead, uh, but it's 20 times better than trailhead because you can actually go and practice here immediately on the website, a lot of different tasks. And we have more than 200 tasks <laughs> on the whole website. Okay. Did you use messaging queue before in, in Salesforce? Let me change the thumbnail on YouTube. No, I didn't use it. I did not use it. Trying to learn how do we can build a backend to track monthly active users analytics. What do you mean in Salesforce monthly use? You can, why do you need this information in Salesforce? Would be quite strange to have this information in Salesforce. Okay. In backend Node.js. Well, I have no idea about backend Node.js. I am I am a Salesforce developer, <laughs> so you are very wrong here. Okay, so let's write here a little bit. Are you Russian? Nope, I'm not. I'm Ukrainian. So here, look at this, look at this one part. Have you ever heard about SEMO? It's fairly esoteric system for measuring how good a software team is. No, wait, don't follow that link. It will take you about six years just to understand that stuff. So I've come up with my own highly irresponsible sloppy test to rate the quality of a software team. The great part about it is that it takes about three minutes. With all the time you save, you can go to medical school. Look, can you feel the flow? Can you feel the flow? Can you feel how nice it feels to read it? You have short sentence to the point. Uh, you don't have all the introductions. So you don't have, hi, my name is Joel and I am a founder or co-founder developer with more than five, blah, boring. No, have you ever heard about SEMA? It's a fairly esoteric system for measuring how good, how good the software team is. This is awesome. This is awesome. It follows this this AIDA formula, right? AIDA. 
with a attention, interest, desire, and action. And that's the way of writing that I want to emulate. Let's see. So I, from last time, from my notes, I have this thing that programming can be broken into steps and then understand the problem, determine how to save the problem in algorith uh, in some form, in algorithmic form, and translate the solution into code, test and debug the program. The A to B, um, this is, that's supposed to be A and that's supposed to be B. Right? So this is this is what I want to write in general about. So in general, I want to like general idea, general idea. Uh, programming is just those steps. So this is just general. Oops, don't want to save it. And just general idea of what I want to write about in general. But I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how should I start. I also want to start. I want to basically practice this thing. Have you ever heard of something? Have you ever I mean, we don't have to start with this thing, right? But in general, what what should we start with? What should be what should be a hook? Let me find this one, source. In what language you write? In English, if that's what you mean. I mean, programming language. I, I try not to write a lot of code. This is this is the I thought it's a it's an ad. I'm a Salesforce developer, so I write in Apex usually. But the platform, the platform that we developed, it's written in uh, Next.js. But I wrote maybe like 5% percent of the whole platform, if not less. Ah, oh, this is actually this is a this is a good one. This is a good one. Can we turn novice into experts in a four-year undergrad program? If so, how? Okay, okay, okay. This is a good idea.
Wait, what? What is the actually the outcome of this paper? I'm not really sure. What they? I th I think they. I remember reading this this paper actually, and they they were speaking something like, uh, it's it's kind of unclear. What I really hate about academic writing is the way they try to phrase everything. I feel like the more difficult you write in the academic writing, the the better it sounds in terms of how academically it sounds. And I remember when I <laughs> when I was writing my bachelor thesis, uh, I was writing it in a very simple. I think, yeah, I was writing it in English. I was writing it in English. Not in German, yeah. Or was it German? No, I think it was English. No, no, I was writing it in English. <laughs> and I was trying to make like really simple lang language, very simple sentences, basically sentences so that uh, a fifth grade can read it. Or someone from the high school can read it. And I was writing those sentences and my supervisor said, hey, you're, you're writing way, way too simple English. Can you can you increase the the basically the academic level of speaking and i did and it was quite unreadable at the end thank you so that's 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 of course that's that's how it goes because because i don't know i don't know just academia is very strange in this regard so basically everything that you learn at the at the university or at the school <laughs> about um about writing you should kind of throw away and then write it in a different way if you if you want to write for business or if you want to write in the career. <laughs> so it's quite quite a strange thing. Novice versus experts. Various studies have concluded that novices lack an adequate mental model of, of the area, are limited to a surface knowledge of a subject, have fragile knowledge, something that the student knows but fails to use when necessary, okay, and neglect and neglect strategies. Okay, use general problem solving strategies, copy a similar solution or work backwards from the goal to determine the solution rather than strategies depending on a particular problem, okay. Tend to approach programming through control structures and use a line by line bottom up approach to problem solution. Okay. Most studies differentiate between a task, a goal with a known solution, and a problem, a goal with no familiar solution. Yeah, this is uh, actually that's interesting because it it also kind of yeah it, it kind of reminds me of what I'm doing because I would say I separate teaching teaching one topic so let's say i wanna let's say i wanna learn lwc right so if you want to learn lwc first step that you need to do is to go and practice already known things so basically you need to have a clear outline of what exact step steps do you need to do to accomplish a certain task so for example uh, I want to teach you LWC and I'm going to give you a table and I'm going to say, you, okay, to, to create such a table, you need to do step number one, two, three, four, and five. And you're going to go and do those steps exactly like this. And you're going to have a table. This is kind of step number one in, in teaching. And once you do it often enough, you can move to the next problem where you don't really have a familiar solution. Uh, now, instead of actually a table i i say to you okay uh, i want to have a table of um, let's say users in the system ordered by something uh, go and try to solve it so you you're still gonna use a lot of elements from the last thing that we discussed but you're gonna introduce new things and you're gonna probably run into a lot of new stuff that that we haven't discussed this is the second step and the third step is I, I I tell something like go and develop a feedback a feedback form uh, something that that is completely out of <laughs> out of scope we have no we have never discussed it 
but you could probably figure out based on the old knowledge based on the knowledge that you already have about lwc you can probably figure out those those new things so that's usually the way i approach it like in these three steps and the first uh, basically what they say is that the first day is a task and the second one is a problem and i can i totally see that that this this can work Okay, common for novice regardless of the area. For example, fragile knowledge and neglect strategies are common in graduate students working in new areas. On the other hand, similar studies have found that experts have many mental models and choose and mix them in the opportunistic way have a deep knowledge on their subject, which is hierarchically and many layered with explicit maps between layers, apply everything they know. When given a task a familiar area, unfamiliar, in a familiar area, okay, work forward for the given and develop sub goals in a hierarchical manner, but given an unfamiliar problem, fall back on general problem solving techniques, okay. Have a better way of recognizing problems that require a similar solution, okay. Tend to approach a program through its data structures or objects, yeah. Use algorithms rather than a specific syntax. This is, um, I think this is, this is very important. One of, one of kind of skills that I got as a developer that I was not expecting when I started is that I, I started thinking about whenever you, you get, you get some kind of a problem you immediately start having this step step by step algorithmic breakdown in your mind basically how you're gonna approach this thing it's like okay i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that that and that um if you need to develop uh, let's say you need you have like a business problem for example uh when we create when we create a quote our sales managers they um they use too many clicks and that slows them down i immediately kind of know what steps do I need to take. <laughs> it's just a matter of basically the bottleneck is typing on how quick I can get out those steps into an actionable plan. So I'm going to say, okay, let's, uh, can you, can you walk me? So I immediately know that I need to ask about walking me through this process so that I can see what steps they take. Uh, I, then I know that I need to research what is already in the system. I need to, to ask other questions. I need to research what's in the system. And I need probably to also go and have a look at what already exists. And then once I have those things, I can already start coding, I can already start like writing down the actual story, uh, stories and, and, and so on. So basically all of these steps, I'm, I'm kind of like just listing them out. It depends, everything depends on what kind of problem are you presented with. But you already get, with the, with the more experience you, you get, immediately like immediately the path outlined in your head and this is something that that beginners really don't have and as a beginner you most likely you will be able to kind of work around one solution or you probably will be able to find the solution but you don't have this map in mind and this is this map is actually what comes with experience so and you also kind of st stop you're, you're, you're stopping thinking in exact apex terms you don't really think about apex you think about uh just the algorithm in general so what is the algorithm okay i'm gonna have this class and this class is gonna call that class and that class is gonna perform a call out and this call out is gonna return return me some result like you think in those terms rather than i'm gonna have a method that's gonna have parameters it's gonna uh, accept a list no you don't think about those things usually Okay, let's have a look at this. Novice learns ob 
objective facts and features and rules for determining action based upon these facts and features. Everything they do is context free. Advanced beginners that's to recognize and handle situations not covered by given facts, features, and rules context sensitive without quite understanding what he she is doing. Aha, this is good. Competence after considering the whole situation consciously chooses an organized plan for achieving the goal. Proficiency no longer has to consciously reason through all the steps to de determine a plan. Expert an expert generally knows what to do based upon major and practiced understanding. Uh, I'm not really, I don't see a difference between proficiency and expert in this case, actually. But this is true. No longer has to consciously reason through all the steps to determine plan. This is, this is true. Like you, the more experience you get, the more, the more you operate on the, I feel like this. <laughs> and this is actually something where, when you, when you only realize, I realized it only when I started teaching because I realized how many concepts I actually don't know why I'm doing it exactly that way. Um, but I'm doing that because I feel like that's the that's the right approach. And when when there's there's some case that you're trying to solve, you're like, okay, I I kind of don't really have a complete a complete justification for every single step, but I feel like that's the right solution. <laughs> and this is what and this is this is what you also get with experience most of us would probably settle for a graduate who ranks between competent and proficient i would say yeah i would say if you're competent this that's like a good already thing okay rather than discussing a complete spectrum anderson presented three stages in learning a skill Interesting. Let's see. Apply very general problem-solving rules to the declarative information given the task. Combine task-specific and general rules into a single rule and or procedure and increase ability by practice. What? In, in, other, all, in other words, we begin by combining the new information with general problem-solving techniques and advance to generating new task-specific problem-solving procedures. While this may be a new in psychology, mathematics pedagogy has used this process for generations. I don't really understand this process. What do you mean? Use different three-stage learning process for medical de develop a way to represent necessary knowledge. Learn this question. Okay, I don't really get this. learn problem solving yeah this is what i learned this is what i what i took it's quite quite interesting program program problem solving can be broken into steps first understand the problem second determine how to solve the problem which consists out of two points in some form and in computer compatible form notice that novice have trouble going from a to b Translate the solution into computer language program and test and debug the program. This is so true. This is so true. So basically what it means that first you need to understand. You need to understand what's going on and you need to understand what are you actually trying to solve. And this is the step that a lot of people <laughs> actually kind of kind of just, just, just put aside. Mm, neglect. Like you cannot you cannot solve a problem if you don't understand what exactly are you solving. This this has been also my mistake. I've been in the first year, I would say I was just trying. I I was getting getting like a requirement and I was immediately st starting with the coding, without even asking. Do I really fully understand what needs to be done? Because how can you start coding if you don't know what needs to be done? No, you need to go and ask people again. <laughs> so and I I was not doing that. So the step number one is to understand the problem. Step number two is to determine how to solve a problem in some form and in computer compatible form. I would tweak it a little bit depending on um, depending on what is your what is your level and what kind of problem are you presented with. I see here two cases. So first, 
possible case is that you're presented with a problem that you have never solved before. Even if you're experienced or not. If you have never solved before, then I think let's let's do it actually. Let's let's do here excel drop here. Um so new problem presented. Okay, so you have a new problem here. New problem. Now, I would say the first thing that you need to ask, is it a new, have you solved it before? Have you solved, it, have you solved this problem before? And if you have if you have experience in this field, then it's it's yes. If if you haven't solved it, then it's no, right? Like this. New problem. Have you solved it before? Yes, no. If yes, does the solution still does the solution still apply or basically solve uh, in a similar in a similar way? Basically, I mean, then the the it's not mm, no brainer. Basically, you can solve in a similar way, and. Actually, actually, if you have a couple of years of experience, or let's say if you have a year of experience, this way it's going to be the main way. Because there, there, are, there are like most problems with Apex and LWC, at some point they repeat themselves. And if you're following, if you're following my advice on creating a data bank, uh, a database of problems that you have solved. So what you need to do is, as a, as a beginner, is go and create a database of problems that you have run into and you had troubles to solve. Uh, I don't know, maybe you had a particular trigger that was hard to implement, or maybe you had some kind of an interesting functionality for LWC, or you built up a DevOps pipeline, whatever. So when you progress through the career, like you have one year, two year of experience, you build up this database. Uh, obviously, it also compounds to your experience. And you will see that at some point, most problems that's going to be presented for you, to you, they will be kind of a certain way of combination of the problems that you have solved already. So it's most likely it's going to be something something like this. And then with a new problem, if you have solved it before, or if it's a kind of a combination of the problems that you have solved solved before, then you should just solve it in the similar way. If it's not, then I would say you should go through a process of ideation so you should go through a process of creating different different ideas how you can solve it uh, basically this is a this is a process to research it right and I would even say <laughs> I'm gonna add here understand understand the problem. Even before you do all of that, you need to understand the problem. You need to understand. When you understand it, have you already solved it before? If no, you go through kind of um, kind of ideation. So you basically try to come up with multiple different ideas how to solve it. Not only one. And the and 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 the the, the whole the whole plan behind this one is not because um, is not because you wanna actually come up with like one solid idea that you're going to be going for no you just you just need to basically throw into your brain different ways how you could p 
potentially solve this problem. And the idea is just to present those 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 ideas in into your head. Basically, kind of you're like throwing a few things into your head, and and they start boiling there, right? They start. Uh, they start kind of like you start thinking you start I forgot the exact term but usually it's some kind of passive thinking so you start doing some kind of passive thinking there and after you go through through the ideation then you go to those steps then you see how you can solve it you choose basically uh, solve in algorithmic form so basically you kind of outline solution found and also keep in mind that at this point the ideation process you might you might need to run this ideation process if you are just a beginner you might just want to do it with your with for example i don't know your uh your mentor your senior developer Right, so you have this ideation process. Then if solution is found, then you solve it. Basically, you outline the solution. Basically, you build the plan. This is, let's build a plan for solution. Don't do the mistake that a lot of people do. They, they go and start writing code immediately. No, don't do that. Uh, build a plan. How do you actually want to solve this problem? Uh, I'm going to create this basically a solution design. I'm going to create those classes. I'm going to I'm going to have this class speaking to another class. I'm going to have this this uh, for example with triggers, right? Uh, or oh, I'm going to have a tri trigger. A trigger is going to uh, call a trigger handler. A trigger handler is going to call the service class or a trigger handler is going to call the actual functionality and the functionality what I want will be written in the trigger handler itself and out of there I'm going to have the call out immediately going from uh, within the trigger handler class, but with a specific method. Uh, you can do it like this, but don't start and don't rush into writing code because you need you need you need to build you need to build a plan you need to build a solution. And only when you have this, then you start writing write code. But only then. But this is you see how. How long it took basically to go into the right code part and there's and there's a reason behind it because this part of writing code is actually the easiest part it's not the hardest part like the the job and the more towards career you progress the less you're going to be doing the less you're going to be doing of this part and the more you're going to be doing of this part and the more on the left you're going to be shifting. So usually if you're a senior developer, you're operating between those things here. Not here with a build a plan. Sometimes also build a plan, which is kind of solution design document that you get. But, but that's the, that's the, that's the way people should approach it. That, I mean, that's the way it worked for me very well uh, at the end of my, I mean, not at the end, but during my Salesforce developer career. That's the plan. Uh, don't, don't go immediately from the problem immediately to writing code unless it's a part of have you solved it before or ideation. You might also just write down a little bit of code just to test out if it's possible. Because you might find, for example, uh, you you solved something similar with LWC. You know that uh, something similar, you probably have done something similar, but you don't know if this is going to apply to your specific case. You can go spend like 30 minutes or maybe an hour, maybe a couple of hours trying to trying to actually write down if, um, if, if what you have actually matches the solution. And if it does, then you found a solution. So that's the plan usually. <laughs> that's the plan. Uh, and I hope more people follow this this approach instead of just going and immediately coding.
Yeah. So this is one thing. And another thing, guys, um, today I really have not that much time. And starting from tomorrow, tomorrow till Sunday, I'm taking off for the first time. It's been a nice sprint of 65 days of showing you how I built my business. But that's going to be it for now. And then from Monday, I might continue with the streams. Most likely I will. Um, yeah, this is the plan. So thank you everyone today. Super short stream. And thank you everyone. And see you either on Sunday on the coding stream or on Monday. See you. Bye-bye.